this makeup department has been handled by multiple even uh, many of the regional people there are kannadigas there are maharashtrians bengalis uh, andhra people many of them have been there this kothamangalam subbu might have had the opportunity to interact with people who are much more affluent people who are uh, you know much more richer or people who have much more facilities than this office boy indeed it is easy when he can appreciate everything that you do when he can help you with everything in n number of ways obviously film making is easy with this guy hello and a very warm welcome to your prep school english classes i am your english teacher kshama in this session today we have taken up one of the longest i would say and also uh, one of the chapters filled with a lot of details lot many things to understand that is taking us for uh, a pancake date i would say with the poets this is definitely not something that you are thinking about it's not about the pancakes that you eat and the poets that write poetry okay let's understand what is it about exactly we are going to understand and decipher the chapter poets and pancakes okay hang in with me till the end of the video you know have your uh, notebooks next to you you have always asked me mam details 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 here it goes okay in this session today we are going to understand about the author who is the author of this lesson uh, the background as well as summary and we are going to recap the entire lesson okay let's waste no time and dive right into understand uh what is this chapter about what are we going to understand in it who are the characters that arrive in this particular lesson okay now before that are dreams very rigid or flexible i always have questions for you uh don't i so do you think dreams are very rigid that it is difficult for you to like you know change your dreams into something or is it that for you it is very easy i can just change it very uh, quickly for example if you were passionate about doing something and then can you just change it quickly with time as time passes or is it not think about it then should we be questioning the dreamers instead is it the dream that should be flexible or rigid or is it that it depends on us if i am ready to you know change my dream or you know twist it a little or be compromising with the, a couple of uh, chances that i have got how does it work how does dream work how you have seen that a lot many people that you come across in life might have wanted to become so many things right doctors engineers actors on the contrary they might have become something else is it that so do you uh, consider it a compromise or is it that they have battled enough and they are happy with what they have got how do you look at it these are things i would want you to ponder upon and uh, who is our author for today our author for today is ashoka mitran the ashoka mitran was the pen name of this particular author his name is jagadish tyagarajan okay it's a pretty south indian name and uh, that's sometimes uh, south indian names are little difficult to pronounce or little difficult to remember so let's just pronounce it again it's jagadish tyagarajan also known as aka r ashoka mitran let's understand everything about him so he is an indian writer who is regarded as one of the most influential figures in the post independent tamil literature so post independent meaning pre independent is everything that is written uh, before the independence of india and post independence obviously it is after the independence of uh, india he is known as one of the most influential people in with regard to what with regard to his contribution to tamil literature in particular yes so he wrote in tamil okay and he began his prolific literary career with the prize winning play which is anbin parisu okay then a distinguished essayist critic he was the editor of the literary journal now this is something uh, although we are south indians we have a problem with it's kanai yagi z h i so uh, that is also one of his uh, he was the editor of this particular literary journal so he is a distinguished essayist critic and he was also you know he has written a prize winning play then he has written over 200 short stories and nine novels then some 15 novellas besides the other prose writings so there is um 200 short stories 200 is such a big number can you you know think of keeping yourself persistent on to writing 200 short stories isn't that crazy then nine novels and some 15 novellas as well as other prose writings later on most of his works have also been translated into english and other indian languages including hindi malayalam and telugu okay 
So uh, translation is also one of the uh, most beautiful and most complicated uh, arts, uh, I would say, because it's not easy to word by word translation. I mean, anybody can do, but if you are uh, doing the, you keeping the meaning intact and yet doing the translation beautifully, uh, not losing the originality of it. That's the great thing about translation and that I wanted to add on. So most of his works have been translated not only to English, but also to the regional languages such as Malayalam, Telugu and what else? Hindi. Okay, so that is about Ashoka Mitran. In this particular uh, lesson, which is Poets and Pancakes, Ashoka Mitran, uh, you know, shares with us his days in a studio, a studio which was very famous, known as the Gemini Studios in India. Okay, so let's understand what is the details that he has given. I'd also want you to go through the lesson and um, understand it even better from your perspective. Now, moving forward. The chapter starts with, interestingly, the author giving us the description of pancakes. Now, this is not the pancakes that we eat. It is the pancake or a material that is used in the, um, you know, makeup industry. Okay, that pancake he is referring to. He says, the brand name of the makeup material Gemini Studios brought in truckloads. That's pancake. Okay, in Gemini Studios, it was bought, brought in truckloads in order to do makeup for people over there. Okay. So it was brought in truckloads, that point we are clear. Then Greta Gabo, Miss Gohar, Vaijayanti Mala, all of whose pictures you can see here. This is Greta Gabo, this is Miss Gohar and this is Vaijayanti Mala. These three ladies, you know, they might have used it. They have used it, says our author. But our uh, another lady over here, Rati Agnihotri, she might have not even heard of it. Giving us an idea of how popular this pancake or the you know, makeup material used by or brought to Gemini Studios, how popular it was. All of these famous ladies known in that post-independent era had, you know, relentlessly used it. But Rati Agnihotri over here is an exception to it. She might not have even heard of it. Okay. Then the makeup department, then he actually leads us to the makeup department in the Gemini Studios. We have entered the Gemini Studios understanding about the pancakes that are used over there. Okay. Then we move towards the makeup department. Where is the makeup department? It is upstairs. Okay. The British officer Robert Clive, he used it as his tables where the horses were tied and everything. Okay. He initially used the rooms as his stables, but later on, it became the makeup studio of Gemini Studios. Okay, the makeup department. Moving forward, a dozen more buildings have been his residence in the city. His, uh, you know, a lot of buildings have been used by him uh, as residence. Then in his brief life and his briefer stay in Madras, we get to know that it is in Madras that they are talking about. So Robert Clive was in Madras and his, uh, whilst his brief stay in Madras, uh, he has had a lot of residence. He has, you know, owned a lot of buildings. Then, uh, fighting impossible battles, remote corners of the world. In the remote corners of the world, he has also been known for fighting, you know, impossible battles. Then, what else has he been known for? And marrying a maiden in St. Mary's Church in Fort St. George in Madras. He is also known for marrying this maiden and also about what? Fighting impossible battles. He also goes on to give us a little something about Robert Clive, giving us a backstory of what is there behind this uh, makeup room in the Gemini Studios. Okay, moving forward. What else do we get to know about uh, this one? There is a strict hierarchy. Hierarchy as to what, why, how, we'll understand it in detail. We'll go slow. Okay. Now the makeup room, you know, it looks much more similar to a hair cutting salon. You can imagine a hair cutting salon with a lot of, uh, you know, shining bulbs, as you can see in the picture, flashing right across your face. I mean, that would totally blind you if you sit there for a very long period of time. Imagine sitting there for hours, coming back right out um, and, uh, you know, not being able to see anything, right? So these were incandescent lights put all over the mirror and everything. Imagine the misery of subjected to, um, you know, being subjected to makeup sitting there for hours and hours altogether. Okay. Then, so the makeup department, who was it headed by first? Uh, our Ashoka Mitran goes on uh, to give us some insider information. Okay. So it was first um, headed by a Bengali. 
which uh, eventually he grew big for the studio we don't know if it is figuratively uh, that he became very famous and he actually had to leave the studio and you know went on to do something else or physically he grew big for the studio and went out of it we don't know about that okay then maharashtrian was assisting him this bengali person later on by dharwar uh, kannadiga and uh, an andhra madras indian christian an anglo burmese and local tamil so you see that this makeup department has been handled by multiple even uh, many of the regional people there are kannadigas there are maharashtrians bengalis uh, andhra people many of them have been there right at that time period there used to be a lot of uh, you know all india radio and uh, doordarshan used to uh, have a lot of programs on national integration not to spread and promote national unity national integration and uh, our ashoka mitran over here tells us as to how there was already an example of how there was wonderful national integration it was an exemplary of the fact that gemini studios already had national integration uh, in it it didn't want it much before air or doordarshan started uh, to tell about it about national integration okay then now the makeup department there's something really interesting the makeup department department can do um, you remember how in your like school days for example in your third standard or fourth grade uh whenever you look at the pictures you see that even if be it a boy or a girl you see there is a lot of cheek rose that has been put to you and there are a lot of lipstick that has been you know put on to you forcefully sometimes now why do you think that is the case they made everybody literally look like a you know a flower monkey or you look like a candy for sure now why is it that here also the makeup department has the magical power to make any person any decent looking person into a monster they would apply so much makeup on this person maybe it's the um, the pancake and a locally made potions and lotion so what do they do uh, they all they did was mix up all these pancakes with locally made lotions and everything and apply it so much on any of the decent looking person it had the power to transform him or her into a monster literally like bare eyes if you look at them totally a monster now why is it that most of the times it was mainly indoor shooting hence all the lightings and setup probably required these normal looking people to be transformed into a monster so that on camera they look pretty okay that probably might have been the reason tells our ashoka mitra so only 5% shootings were outdoors and remaining it was all mainly indoor shooting probably that is the reason they were put on so much makeup okay moving forward after this one a strict hierarchy what is this about uh, as our ashoka mitran tells us maybe the requirement of the sets and the lights was so that uh, uh, any person decent looking person had to be transformed into a monster okay now there was a strict hierarchy in the makeup department as well yes wherever you go there's always strict hier hierarchy no matter how much one tries to uh, you know make it uh, all even it's not possible all the time isn't it most of the working systems will have a hierarchy one or the other way now what is the hierarchy this there is an interesting hierarchy over here what is it now the chief makeup man okay whoever is the chief over there he will make the chief actors and actresses ugly so the main lead or the hero or the heroine we can say chief makeup man will make them look ugly okay then the senior assistant he will have a senior assistant not just assistant senior assistant and he will make the second hero or the second heroine junior assist all these people second hero or heroine look ugly then senior assistant will definitely have a junior assistant he will make the main comedian and all these people look ugly then who will then there will be so much of crowd no the junior artists uh, those who play as vegetable vendors and all those people who will do the makeup for them then the background dancers and everybody the crowd was the responsibility of the office boy yes you heard me right this office boy over here what he would do is that he would mix the paint in a giant vessel whenever it was the crowd shooting it was his job to sit in a place and mix the entire plate uh, you know uh, paint in a giant vessel and slap it on all the faces just to cover all the pores and make them all shiny so but this office boy over here we need to know a little something about him this boy is not literally a boy okay who is in his uh, adolescence or somewhere in his 20s 
he is somebody who is in his early 40s he um, he can be uh, called as how do we understand much more about him he might have been somebody who has entered the uh, studio in his early 20s or 25s hoping to become an actor writer or something like that something very uh, sophisticated in this particular field however uh, due to the lack of opportunities that's why we were talking about dreams and stuff due to the lack of opportunities he becomes eventually an office boy makeup department also had an office boy in gemini studios right when um, in that period of time so he was a bit of a poet he was a bit of a poet mainly because he knew everything most of everything uh, what happens in the gemini studio he has been there throughout and he's somebody who sings the stories of uh, whatever that happens in this particular place and ashok mitran calls him as you know he's kind of like a poet he can be called as a poet so now we got to know who is the poet who is what is the pancake right moving forward people thought that i was doing nothing ashok mitran also tells us about what people thought of him in between now um this ashok mitran over here he actually uh, worked inside a cubicle you know what a cubicle is and um, he used to collect all the newspaper articles he used to tear them up collect it and uh, probably uh, most of the people thought that he was not doing anything Uh, all day long probably the boss thought the same way uh, as well all that you have to do is just tear up some articles and keep it what else do you do hence he was always he would always become the target of free lecture imagine if you um, your parents have had a little dispute some argu argument or something and when you are free whenever you meet one of them you will get to definitely hear their version similar was the case of our ashok mitran so he would say he was the receiver of extended lecture okay so the makeup department the office boy that we were talking about he would actually come and give this you know elaborated uh, lecture to our ashok mitran what was this about he would say such a waste of literary uh, talent every time there was a uh, crowd shooting he had to just do the makeup and everything those were the things that he had to do you know carry some stuff give some stuff or call somebody these are the things that he wanted to do and he would get so frustrated that he would come to ashok mitran and tell you know such a literary talent i am and it is all being wasted okay it's all for nothing hence ashok mitran always wish that please god let there be a crowd shooting so that i you know get rid of him he'll be completely busy and i don't have to listen to any of the lecture okay if that's clear then all of this office boy's anger actually was uh, you know it it sort of was although he was frustrated out of lot many things it was actually uh, it had uh, taken a source it had got a source in one person and which is kothamangalam subbu okay you can look up to this person also he was also a very famous uh, personality uh, in we'll get to know much more about him in uh, the gemini studios let's get to know that right now and this office boy's anger was always concentrated towards yelling at uh, this particular person who is kothamangalam subbu okay the subbu he was the number 2 uh, at gemini studios after the producer and everything higher hierarchy he was like the number 2 person in the gemini studios okay and um, uh he did not also have an encouraging opening in the films or anything as such so he had to face a lot many probably lot many uncertainties a lot of difficulties than the office boy nobody knows about it okay a lot of backlashes he did not have wonderful amazing opening and everything okay then beginning of his uh, career there was uh, when he started when kothamangalam subbu started now the poet uh, or our author ashok mitran over here goes on uh, to tell us about kothamangalam subbu let's get to know about him so when kothamangalam subbu started there were no firmly established uh, film producing companies or studios as such now the office boy has come and he is not getting jobs now he is in his early 40s but when subbu started off there was not even a properly established uh, film studios or film companies at that time okay so not much luck with the formal education too he did not have great many uh, deal of formal education as well but our uh, office boy over here did think that no matter what my anger is directed towards him only because of one reason there there is one reason he was born a brahmin and it's a virtue indeed our office boy thought that since he is a brahmin he has all the um, uh, things that he wants access to and what are the things that he think of exposure to more affluent situations and people this kothamangalam subbu might have had the opportunity to interact with people who are much more affluent people who are uh, you know much more richer or people who have much more facilities than this office boy so this guy might have been in those situations and people that's more than enough 
that's more than what i have not done in my life was the logic of our office boy okay moving forward what else is there in this uh, lesson for us there's so many details hang in there you can also make uh, like a mind map it's not that in language you can't make one uh, list the characters that you are being introduced to so first we talked about the pancakes then we talked about a little about robert clive uh, also we talked about the makeup department in uh, gemini studios as to what is the hierarchy that is there and who does make up to who then we are introduced to the office boy later on we talk about kothamangalam subbu and also a little about ashok mitran and his cubicle stories and the long lectures that he has to listen moving forward he goes on to explain to us what sort of a person is kothamangalam subbu so this guy is somebody who can look cheerful at all times no issues at all i mean i don't know how one can manage to do that so he can look cheerful at all times even after having a hand in a flop movie he did have hands in flop movies not that his responsibility alone but even after that bad luck uh, all of that happening he can still look cheerful all the time and he would work for somebody and uh, never do things on his own he, he is not somebody who would take initiative and take everything into control act all powerful and dominant he would have work for somebody who would just segregate the distribute it to people and do it like that his work culture or his way of working was like that so he according to ashok mitran was tailor made for the film industry he this guy was born to do it he was a natural why did he feel so because uh, you know he could be inspired whenever commanded imagine if the director asks what do you think this is nice this is okay i i think this way so this guy is somebody who can reciprocate with the exact same amount of excitement okay so hence that is the reason he was tailor made for films and uh, he because he can be uh, inspired any time you command him to do so that's not something you can do on in a, you know inspiration is something that is very instinctive you only get inspired whenever you feel that something is nice but this guy over here can actually you know get inspired whenever you ask him to be so in this lesson since there are a lot many details i am going as much as possible line by line in order to give you what one line means so that you have the entire gist of it right in your heads then so imagine our uh, ashok mitran gives us an example of imagine director one day tells this uh, kothamangalam subbu that uh, the rat fights the tigress underwater there's a rat fighting a tigress okay underwater imagine how this would look like then kills her rat kills the tigress okay i I'll, i'll have to probably uh, hold my hand a little bigger so this rat over here kills the tigress then what happens but takes pity on her cubs rat takes pity on the cubs and uh, so it tends them lovingly it cares towards them it nurtures them very lovingly uh, i don't know how to do the scene the producer would say imagine the producer would say this is very illogical that is this is very Ill- irrational even at that this guy can be inspired and he can think of subbu will always give uh, uh, you four ways of how one can do it a rat fighting a tigress you know killing her and then nurturing and tending towards the cubs very lovingly subbu is somebody who would even appreciate this one also and he can give you present you with four ways of how this can be done the producer even if he is not uh, meanwhile when this guy is explaining the whole thing if the producer is still not happy about it subbu can again come up with 13 to 14 ways to do it okay so if only he comes with four ways the producer says good but i don't know i am not sure if this is enough effective enough if this is good enough if the producer starts whining then uh, subbu will have still 14 more alternatives ready okay so you know that this guy was tailor made for films then film making is easy with subbu says ashok mitran indeed it is easy when he can appreciate everything that you do when he can help you with everything in n number of ways obviously film making is easy with this guy so a man who gave direction and definition to gemini studio so when gemini studios was at its peak when it when it was doing really good in its golden years somebody who could be given credit to who gave direction and definition to gemini studios at that point of time in the golden years is definitely this guy over here who is subbu okay this guy is also another additional identity of this guy is also as a poet okay now we know that ashok mitran has this way of like calling these people who have had their own dreams have had struggled so much but are really intellectually very can have like a stimulating content in their minds them as poets you can decipher all that from this one okay 
um, you know, the office boy who has spent so many years in the dream or wish to become something, yet has become something else, is whining about it. He is also a poet and this guy also has a separate identity as a poet. Then, moving forward, so he was capable of Subbu, Kotamangalam Subbu was capable of many more complex things, okay, uh, like higher forms, but only chose to deliver his poetry to the masses. Now, this guy is actually doing poetry, I is writing poetry. However, uh, he was, you know, capable of much more things, uh, much more uh, poetries, much more uh, stories and everything, prose writing particularly. He only chose, he decided that poetry is something that I would want to transact or convey to my audience. Okay. Success in films, however, as he went on getting success in films, it overshadowed his talent as a literary intellectual person or a literary achiever. He was really good at it. But all that people knew him for was whatever that he was in the film industry. Okay, So success in films overshadowed the literary achievements. Uh, his critics also felt the same. Then he composed several original story poems, you know, poetry is sort of like a ballads, uh, poetry that have story in them. Then also wrote a uh, sprawling novel, Tillana Mohanambal. Okay, This is the name of the novel that uh, Kotamangalam Subbu wrote not um, our Ashoka Mitra, not any other poets. Do not confuse. Now, he successfully recreated Devadasis of the earlier 20th century uh, in the work, one of the work as uh, Ashoka Mitra particularly uh, significantly, you know, notes us for uh, in this one, is that uh, he actually was able to recreate how the lives of Devadasis uh, in the early 20th century. I do hope that you know the concept of what Devadasis were. These were, you know, um, as the name signifies, they, they were the servant, women who were the servants of gods. Okay. But then eventually they uh, were uh, ill-treated or mistreated by the society. And that is the reason they had to go through a lot of sufferings. And hence, he was able to, he's somebody, that's a very significant thing, that is why. He was able to um, recreate or manage to recreate the early 20th century life of Devadasis, which is, you know, very appreciative. Then he was an amazing actor as well. So these poets are all um, multi-talented uh, people, we must add. So he was an amazing actor, but he never aspired to do the lead roles. You know, doing lead roles, becoming a hero or an actor was never his thing. Although he aced it, he was really good at it. What did he want to do? He chose poetry instead. Okay. Then he seemed close with the boss. To everybody in the Gemini studios, he always felt he's the number two, remember? So he uh, always seemed like he's really close to the boss. What's, what's with these two people, with boss and Kotamangalam Subbu? Then or, or was it because his general demeanor that resembled a flatterer? Or was it because he was uh, always right at the tip of the tongue, he can always talk good about people, which generally comes across as somebody who is flattering you, somebody who is just faking it out, okay? So is it because of his general demeanor, his general manner of talking good about people, that people thought, how is it that this guy is also close with the boss? Okay, that was also one opinion that circulated in the Gemini studios. It's so interesting to get to know so many things, so many in every, why is it important that you are studying it now is that when you go out there and start working in any system for that matter, you become a teacher, you become a techie, you become a doctor or whatever, every place will have a hierarchy and every place will have this complex um, human relationship dynamics that is very difficult to understand. You feel like you will understand people, but you don't know what they are thinking of you, what they are, you know, um, interpreting your actions as. So it is human relationships are always complex. And these are some of the ways how literature can help you decipher through or venture through all these things. Okay. Moving forward, what else do we have in this lesson? Subbu always the boss and uh, he att attendance role. However, um, there was a story department. He, this Subu over here, was a part of the story department, something called as a story department. Now, what's the story department? It also had a lawyer and an assembly of writers and poets. Although Subu was so close to the poet, this is what uh, my slide is trying to tell you. Although Subu was so close to the boss, uh, he was in the attendance role. You could find his name under the story department. Now, what does the story department include? You will love how um, the story uh, has a link and a flow between from one character to another character. We are so easily flowing. And uh, over here, the story department. Pay attention to the story department, which has lawyer, writers, a couple of bunch of uh, writers, as well as poets. Then, 
there was this lawyer that this lawyer is somebody that we really need to know about he is interesting okay this legal advisor is a uh, has a cold logic in a crowd of dreamers everybody that has come uh, over here in gemini studios dreamt of something has become something we got to know all of that okay what's with this lawyer then what's the deal with him now he's a legal advisor he is referred to as opposite this lawyer is referred to as opposite what does he is he known as he is known as for some reputation he is really known for something what is it that so there was once a very talented actress okay she was really talented really pretty and everything there was a talented actress but she had a problem with her temperaments she had temper tantrums and everything okay so once she blew out blew up on the sets and she lost her cool and she started yelling and shouting at people but when nobody was paying attention to anything else other than her shouting and blasting this guy over here went and switched on the camera okay everything got recorded so everyone stood stunned the lawyer switched on the recording equipment this guy used his brain switched on the recording equipment and let's see what else happened the actress paused for a breath she had yelled at what have you done what is the thing that is happening and she paused for a breath only then to realize that the lawyer said one minute please and started playing the recording this is very interesting then there was nothing foul okay then there was nothing wrong about why she was yelling at the producer and everything however the way she was communicating it with so much anger and everything she heard her voice again and she was dumbstruck so that was the end of a successful career so her career doomed after that so that's what our legal advisor did okay so moving forward she was a girl from countryside and she was not never uh, introduced to such a life people treating her so nicely all of a sudden uh, it was all too much for her to take however so she never recovered from the terror of that day and hence it was an end of the brilliant acting career that's our story with the lawyer however eventually we also see that it's not just the actress who lost her job the lawyer also loses his job let's see how that happens okay so uh, the other member of the department they wore uh, khadi dhoti okay so it was slightly oversized and clumsily tailored white khadi shirt this is what they wore so they wore khadi and dhoti oversized clumsily uh, fitting shirts and uh, are dhoti then the legal advisor however what was distinct about him he always wore pants and a tie and sometimes a coat as well pants tie and sometimes a coat then he often looked very alone and helpless this legal advisor who was so cold all by himself all the time he always looked as though he was very alone and he was helpless so he tried to uh, stay neutral between gandhiites and khadiyats so whenever that there is a place of work there will be a lot of people when there are a lot of people there will be a lot of belief systems i believe in something you believe in something and um, you might feel i am wrong i might think you are wrong however that does not mean i get to disrespect you or uh, not uh, agree with you all the time i might have my own opinion so uh, this guy over here out of all the people with gandhi it's those who followed gandhi uh, khadi system and everything out of all these he tried to stay very neutral okay then like so many close to the boss allowed to produce a film but not much came out as many were close to the boss they were somehow managed to bring out a film this guy also managed to bring out a film but then it was not much of a success uh, not much came out of that particular movie that the lawyer also participated in or had a hand in then the boss closed the story department now that the film that uh, did not do very well because of the writers because of the poets and whoever was the part of it okay we also got to know subhu kothi mangalam subhu was also part of the films that uh, you know had a flop now we know that hence the boss decided to close down the story department altogether now when that happened only a uh, instance in human history where a lawyer lost his job only because the poets and writers were asked to go home that would never happen right when the poets and uh, writers would lose a job why would a lawyer be asked to go home that's probably one of the circumstances in the human history where because of the poets and uh, writers who did not do really well and hence the movie did not run the legal advisor was also asked to go home hence he also lost his job then what else do we have gemini studios also had some more poets as ashoka mitran lists it for us sds yogi r uh sangu subramanyam krishna shastri harindranath chattopadhyay all these were significant names of the poets from gemini studios then 
So uh, the mess, let's talk about the mess. We have actually gone through all the departments, haven't we? And we have a glance of whatever that is happening in the Gemini studios as though it is happening right in front of us today. Okay. So let's talk about the mess. Mess supplied great coffee. And um, so, and also Ashok Mitran tells us that during those period of, um, in the time, Congress rule meant, uh, meant prohibition over uh, everything. And also a cup of coffee at that uh, time period was a very satisfying entertainment because they could talk about everything over a cup of coffee. People would talk about politics, entertainment, everything, right? So at that time uh, period, the munching thing that they had was the Congress rule and how there was prohibition on everything. So uh, hence Ashoka Mitran says a cup of coffee was like a satisfying entertainment because you would get to talk about a lot many things. So uh, most of them wore khadi as we got to know earlier as well. They worshipped Gandhiji. But then beyond that, they did not really know about politics and had, um, you know, a vision or something like that. They did not have so many thought process and everything. All they know was they wore Gandhi and they appreciated uh, or worshipped Gandhi. Beyond that, they did not have any, um, I would say, productive uh, political thoughts for that matter. Then they had an aversion to communism. Now, what is communism? Communism in general is very different. Uh, it says that the, all the resources must be shared by people of the community and they should be the in charge. Uh, they should contribute uh, to the progress of the community and all of them should get equal share. This is the general idea of communism and stuff. But over here in the Gemini studios, I would say there is an entirely different idea of communism altogether. What is it that now we feel like we are moving towards a little complex stuff over here. According to people in the uh, Gemini studios, a communist is somebody who is a godless man. And he would not think twice uh, before hurting his own people, for example, friends, family, parents, for that matter. Okay, so he did, he did not have a sense of right or wrong, according to the Gemini studios people, if you are a communist. Okay. So such notions prevailed everywhere and also floated in Gemini studios. It was there all around and hence it was also there in the Gemini studios. Then Frank Bushman, uh, he had uh, his moral rearmament army. Okay, so 200 strong people, all these had visited India once. So Ashoka Mitran recalls an instance of Frank Bushman's uh, moral rearmament army. So we will know it as M-A-A, -A, okay, M-R-A. Moral Rearmament Army, uh, some 200 very strong built people had visited Madras and the host that they found was Gemini Studios. So we have Frank Bushman's Moral Rearmament Army with 200 people who had visited Madras and the host that they found was what? Our Gemini Studios. Let's understand what happened over there. Then for people of Gemini Studios, it was more like some called it an international circus. Okay. Um, they presented two plays in the most very like a professional manner. All they, they did not have anything to do with animals and how to trick these animals and everything, how it usually happens in the circus or a zoo. They presented two most uh, plays in a very professional manner. And what is the name of the plays? One is Jotham Valley and the Forgotten Factor. The name of these two plays are Jotham Valley and Forgotten Factor. Now, 600 people in the Gemini family you know, watched those plays and enjoyed it thoroughly. Then it had a simple message. The setting that was there, the set that was there and the costume that were used were of top-notch quality. Okay, that is what impressed them a lot. It had a very simple uh, message although. So after that, after these Jotham Valley and the Forgotten Factor, in the um, Madras or in the Tamil drama community, whatever the play that you saw for a very long period of time, the influence or the impact was so, so strong. Whatever the uh, Tamil, um, you know, dramas or whatever in the Madras community you saw any of the plays, it would have a scene of sunrise, which is borrowed from the Jotham Valley, of course. Okay, a scene of sunrise and there was white curtain at the background, then there was flute, uh, sunset. This was all mandatory which was the impact that this Jodham Valley had on the regional, this local people over here. Okay, then MRA, the Moral Rearmament Army that we are talking about. So it was a counter movement to international communism. Now understand that people in the Gemini studios, they had an aversion towards, they were, they were not okay with communism. And MRA, people who had come over here, Frank Bushman's MRA was also against so it was a counter movement to international communism. 
now you understand why they had invited it and why they came right away uh, straight away to gemini studios you understand the uh, connection over there right so our um, uh, big boss over here is mr vasan he simply you understand that he simply played into the hands of people uh, it'll be nice now these people also have aversion towards communism and that's the reason they have the people who are acting as a international counter for uh, international communism have have also come over here then the international communism uh, or not whether there is international communism or no whether there is mra or not okay the staff of gemini studios had nice time hosting 200 people as we got to know and who belonged to some 20 different nationalities you forget about whether they had a connection whether this boss decided vasan decided uh, mr vasan decided to have these people because of the communism uh, thing because they supported these things or not or because they wanted to get to know more about it forget about all those keeping all those aside gemini studios had a blast hosting these 200 people with uh, 20 different nationalities and watching the amazing plays like jodham valley and the forgotten factor so it was an air of fresh air of change for them then moving forward a few months later something happens okay uh, the telephone buzzed and the gemini studio people were all set they were like okay are they coming back do we uh, will we get to um, see many more uh, you know uh, plays or something like that but that did not happen okay gemini all cleared up and they were all ready to host again but however a poet from england was about to come it was only a poet who was about to come but gemini people did they know much about the poets from england all they knew was they only knew from england all the known and heard poets were wordsworth and tennyson alfred tennyson okay these two were mostly known then to the more literate people who were much more educated they also knew about keats shelley and byron okay some also faintly knew about t s eliot so this was the case they did not know who this particular poet uh, from england poet is okay he is not a poet some said he is an editor he is not really a poet okay he is an editor and who is coming it's this is all floating news you don't know exactly who he is what he is okay boss is giving reception and uh, vasan the editor of popular tamil weekly um anand vikatan he is the boss that we get to know okay he is also um, one of the editor popular uh, editor of the tamil weekly named as anand vikatan and uh, this guy is about to give us um, information as to who is coming what is happening and everything okay that was all that even the most well informed among us knew all the poets that we knew about were these people and the maximum that we knew also was if it is the regional thing we knew about vasan who is the editor of popular tamil weekly anand vikatan we did not know much more things about him and the poet who is about to come he is not a poet they say it he is an editor let's get to know more about him as he arrives okay then around 4 in the afternoon the poet or the editor he arrived he came till now we don't know who he is what is his name or anything let's get to know okay he was a tall man and he was he looked very english with suit boot and everything okay very sophisticated very serious and very unknown we don't know anything about him okay then battling half a dozen people and everything he came and he was about to talk to these people the boss he actually gave a very long but a very general speech as to he also didn't seem like he knows much about this editor slash poet okay he only gave general information about democratic something that included words like this and started telling the people about this editor or the poet so he gave a long speech obviously it is it was understood that the boss also doesn't know much about this editor okay so then this poet address the people over there okay and uh, ashok mitran was very sure that he might he would have never address such a quiet uh, silent audience in his entire lifetime okay no one knew what he was talking because of the difficulty to understand what accent he is speaking in what is he speaking accent was a blockage moving forward an hour later the poet left he spoke and spoke and spoke nobody understood anything it was all quiet awkward and then he went away one hour later moving forward this english poet uh, everybody wondered about what is this english what significance or what matter of importance is this english poet uh, in the scenario he is very out of place out of context right what will be uh, he be of any importance in the place where people appreciate tamil simple tamil films they want to know want to watch tamil films what is he doing over here in the studio of tamil films 
for simplest people what is he doing here least possibility of taste for i mean at that time period people over there in the gemini studios or or around will not have there are very minimal chances of them having a taste for poetry of england okay so there is no context no connection then what was he doing over here everybody thought everybody tried to scratch their brains now his visit remained an unexplained mystery it will be explained however at the end but till now it doesn't make sense why has he come what did he do we did not understand okay then i hope you understood what i explained though then um our ashokumitran tells us that prose writing people can say anything but i don't agree exactly that prose writing is like the highest form of pursuit of genius it's a work of art or all that i don't think i'll agree to that okay it's not true pursuit of genius because it requires a lot of patience a lot of perseverance you know if you are um, writing something a very long piece of uh, writing it should have you should have a lot of uh, patience to it you should be ready to take a lot of rejection also right so um fresh copy you should be ready to prepare a fresh copy and uh, you know buy a stamp page put it and then uh, you know send it across to the editor even if that means the manuscript will be returned to you you should be ready to take all of that so it's not like a pursuit of genius or something don't think of it that way it's just that you have to be really patient really persevering in whatever the attempts that you're doing if it is sent to another editor for return of the manuscript you should be ready for all of this then for such maybe keeping in mind all these things the hindu this particular paper paper had made an announcement in a very insignificant corner of the unimportant page there was one announcement what was the announcement it was there was a short story contest okay now in this short story contest um it was there was a british periodical which is the encounter in the encounter this if it is chosen the short story is chosen it will be published in that one okay the british periodical was conducting this um, short story contest what is the name of the british periodical it is the encounter moving forward this was not known to gemini this british periodical named as obviously british it was known to gemini the encounter um, but however before starting to write and invest his energy invest a lot of uh, on the stamp page sending it to the uh, british periodical the encounter the r ashoka mitran wanted to know more about this uh, periodical get to know more about it so before spending on postage and everything and sending it to england he wanted to know more about it let's see what he does because of for that um and those days hence he went to the british council library and in the entrance those days it was not like there was long uh, winded sign boards notices to make you feel that you are you know you're not allowed to go over here it was not like a you know, forbidden place as it was uh, eventually um there were a lot of uh, copies of the encounter that were lying around untouched by any of the readers so it was that you can just go and read it pick up and read it so now there was the editor's name i'm sure if you have seen the video of uh, the elementary classroom in islam how, however it's not there in your rationalized content you would know who this person is okay so there was this editor's name editor's name of what the british periodical the encounter okay he is the poet the poet that had come to gemini studios had given one hour lecture that did not make sense at all and the fact that why did he come he had nothing to do with gemini studios tamil films or he did not talk about tamil poetry also that is the poet that is the editor of this british periodical okay found a long lost it felt like to ashoka mitran he had found a long lost brother and he he sang as he just started to read it and everything i'm sure he'll also be singing wherever he is right now he felt like a long lost brother's connection it is stephen spender the poet the editor of the poet that had come to gemini studios or the editor um of our british periodical is none other than stephen spender that was his name okay moving forward long after i was out of gemini studios there was not much money that he had but he had a lot of time okay so you know that he did not make great deal of money when he whilst he worked in gemini studios uh, so in the footpath of the madras mount road uh, post office he saw that there was a brand new book for uh, 50 paises only which is he thought it was cheap so he it had a beautiful elegant paperback cover of american origin he got to know that it is from there and uh, he decided to buy it anything that has a low price it attracts him so special low priced student edition uh, in connection with the 50th anniversary of russian revolution that's why it was 
published what was in it it was the name of the book was the god that failed this is the name of the book in which six men had written six separate essays uh, regarding their journey to communism and their disillusioned return how they it was not as good as they thought it would be hence they have reverted back have turned their backs towards communism that is what they had written about what does this book have to do with anything how did it jump in right through what is happening over here let's see now andre guide richard wright uh, ignacio silon arthur koestler louis fisher and uh, stephen spender there you go we found the name that would sit right in the place okay stephen spender had also written his essay look at the topic journeys into the communism and this illusioned written now mra our uh, frank bushman's um, moral rearmament army also were supporting uh, they were like um, against the international communism these people also wrote uh, about their disillusion uh, coming out of communism or reverting back from uh, communism so it all makes sense why only these people came to gemini studios right because gemini studios also had an aversion towards communism then the boss of gemini studios may not have much to do with stephen spender's poetry you understand what does this mean right it's not that the boss of gemini studios was much interested in what uh, poetry stephen spender was writing or anything as such but it is it he had much more to do with the god that uh, failed the book that uh, he had written an essay and that's what uh, our boss wanted um, uh, stephen spender to talk about and tell the people of gemini studios so i think uh, that is it Uh, about poets and pancakes this is a very complex lesson somewhere where you feel like you have incorporation of a lot of history and a lot of character details a lot of complex human relationships all um, you know coming together at one conjunction totally um, and uh, you saw that you uh, met our uh, pancake what is the pancake about and uh, there's a makeup room uh, department all together um, at the upstairs of gemini studios then we got to know about how it was the stables of uh, robert clive once you know in the pre independent era of course and uh, in the makeup room department we see that there is a strong like a fixed hierarchy the chief makeup man will make uh, the hero or the hero main lead look ugly and the hierarchy follows then we got to introduce uh, um, you know got introduced to office boy who is not literally a boy but somebody who is in his early 40s and does the job of slapping makeup all over the faces of uh, crowd whenever there is a crowd shooting and we get to know about how ashok mitran works in a cubicle collecting all the articles and people most of the time might think that he is not doing anything okay then uh, we get introduced to uh, subbu uh, kothamangalam subbu who was despised although he was such a wonderful person he was also despised by people he also had enemies and what sort of a worker he was he was a natural totally made for tailor made for the film industry and then uh, we also get to know about uh, the lawyer and how he ended a career of a talented actress but then eventually also lost his career because the poets lost their jobs hence he was also a part of the story department he also lost his job um then we get to know how the uh, frank bushman's uh, mra of 200 people came they presented uh, jodham valley and the forgotten factory although that makes sense they were uh, you know presenting a play and everything uh, however it is it was obvious that they also supported they were a counter movement to international communism so it understands these people in the gemini studio were also against uh, communism a communism according to them was somebody who was you know a godless man somebody who would uh, who would create uh, destruction and uh, you know who is a source of violence so according to them it was as such although he, they did not have a many productive political thoughts or anything as such um they were gandhi they considered themselves gandhiites and worshiped gandhi uh, the lawyer stayed neutral however in this one uh, then there is um, the poet that visits the poet that they don't know anything about the gemini studio people know nothing about and uh, uh, eventually our ashok mitran gets to know that this poet is stephen spender when he was about to send an article uh, to the british periodical named as the encounter and he gets to know that uh, eventually even then uh, it's only the poet's name that you got to know 
eventually he got to know why the poet in particular had come to G gemini studios it's because he also contributed uh, an article or an essay in the god that failed which is you know which talks about uh, one's journey into communism and how they got disillusioned uh, by the concept of it and uh, they are going to elaborate on the same so the boss of gemini studios he much not he might not have had greater appreciation to the poetry or the um, you know the play that was performed by frank bushman's um, mras uh, it was the idea or the version of communism that they supported and that's why uh, they came it all makes sense at the end uh, i hope you understood the lesson today it is something that once when you have a mind map it's all so easy uh on that note read your textbook very carefully very thoroughly and be ready i'll see you all in the next session until then take care thank you